The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to this webinar where we're going to be looking at our functional skills entry level offer. Um, my name is Amanda Kelly and I'm the industry manager for maths, English, ESOL and employability. Um, I can see that the numbers are still climbing. So just while we wait for the last few people to join us, um, I will I'm recording this webinar, but I will also do a recording of the slide deck and place that on the uh, resource hub on the website um, so that you can come back to this and have a listen to it at your leisure later. And I'll also put a copy of the slides there. Um, this is go to webinar. So we find generally if you have an issue um, is it's a good idea to um, exit the webinar and rejoin. That usually clears any technical issues. And I have turned the question box off for now, um, but towards the end, um, I will turn it back on. Um, and then if you've got questions about what I'm sharing with you, uh, that's going to be your opportunity to ask them. So let's get going. Um, so this morning, what I'm going to be doing, um, looking at English first, we're going to have a quick look at the new live materials, what's on offer, and um, talk through the plans. And then for maths, um, there's a little bit of an update about the change in pass marks. And again, we'll have a look at what the titles are for the live materials and what our plans are for additional samples. And then there's a change to the way we would like you to um, share information with us regarding entry level assessments. So I shall go um, through that as well. So we advised you um, in an email update at the beginning of August that we were going to be uploading some new live um, reading assessments. And these are for use for all candidates from the 1st of September. We've removed the original live assessments and we would instruct you as centres to destroy any paper or electronic versions of those old papers that you have. Now, the reason behind that is we are going to look at um, reworking some of those and possibly making them available as samples later in the year. So we, it's very important that centres don't reuse the old live materials. Um, for reading, the, the live materials consist of a candidate paper and a mark scheme and a set of assessor instructions which have been updated. Now we would recommend that you read those assessor instructions at least four weeks before you intend to do any assessments to make sure that you have got all the bases covered. Um, the tables on the screen show the four titles of the new live papers for the reading. So they vary um, from uh, talking about a new home at entry one, um, right the way through to entry three, where we've got a very topical one all around weather watch. <laughs> so the existing sample materials have been reviewed and updated where necessary. Um, these are the titles of the current sample materials. So we've got um, for entry one, we've got health tips, food and drink, party and acting. At entry two, we've got guide to health, holidays, handmade and safety. And then for entry three, we've got well-being at the gym, social media and treasure. Now, what we're going to do is add further samples during the year so that by the end of the year, there'll be eight sample reading papers for use at each level. Now, originally, what we were going to do was remove these versions of the samples and just replace them with new ones. But we listened to feedback from centres where they said they found the sample materials very useful as teaching tools. So we're going to retain the ones that have been available up until now and centres will just have some new ones to add to the collection. Um, we've also uploaded four new writing assessments for use from the 1st of September. 
So at entry one, we've got titles such as lunch, a day out, time off and on the bus. At entry two, getting a job, repairs, making a difference and the town centre. And at entry three, travel experiences, cleaning, world of work and litter. Again, I must um, reiterate that if you hold copies of any of the old live materials, they must be destroyed. Um, the, again, the existing sample materials have been reviewed and updated where it was necessary. And these are the four current sample materials. Again, we will be adding four further samples over the year. Um, I don't actually have a time frame for the new samples, but I think they'll probably go up in pairs. So you'll see two new samples have arrive um, earlier in the year, hopefully before Christmas, and then a further two later in the year as you prepare for your summer, um, summer assessment schedules. So moving on to entry level math, um, when we write new assessment materials, the writers have to obviously pay close attention to the subject content of the qualifications. And we review all of our new materials to ensure that they are at an appropriate level and that they address the subject content statements um, when they set the pass marks for the papers. Um, we take into condition, uh, consideration a number of factors, such as the demand of the level being assessed, um, to make sure that the pass marks reflect the standard required. Another thing that we had to take into a, a consideration when we wrote these new materials was feedback from Ofqual about um, removing the adjustment of pass marks um, due to the end of the sawtooth peer effect which occurs when um, you en introduce new qualifications. So I've included a link at the bottom of this slide, which um, takes you to the Ofqual blog about sawtooth effect. Um, we, because we didn't introduce um, new materials last year during COVID, um, you are seeing these changes to the pass marks for the first time this year. So as a result of these considerations, the pass marks for these new entry level functional skills maths papers, it's different from the original sets of lives. And what we've done is we've released, uh, we've reworked the samples that were available on the website um, to make sure that they take account of these new passwords. So we've introduced four new live assessments at each level. Entry one, we've got photography, ferry crossing, railways and the country park. At entry two, we've got beauty, vehicle maintenance, food preparation and the art shop. And at entry three, we've got the new kitchen, walking holiday, waste and recycling and camping trips. So again, make sure that you have destroyed any of the original sets of live assessments that you may have both electronically um, or paper. Um, so, as I said, we've, we've reworked the existing sample materials and mark schemes to take um, account of the fact that the pass marks for the live materials have changed because your, <clears throat> excuse me, your candidates will now need to be working towards a different pass mark for their papers. So there's a table there that shows the titles of the existing pass marks. And again, we're going to be adding some further samples over the year so that by the end of the year there will be eight sample oh dear that should say mathematics papers for each use for use at each level so moving on to a change in terms of administration so the new live materials have part uh, new passwords so these have been updated in walled garden so when you go to walled garden you visit the administration section for 474801 or 474803. And we've changed our approach so that each level has its own password. And this helps mitigate against um, issues that we have experienced in the past, where a centre has inadvertently shared the password with a candidate who then has access to all the assessments. So um, we're 
rather than have a, a different password for every single assessment, which would be a, a nightmare to manage, what we've done is we've separated up the levels so that um, should we need to adjust anything, if there is an incident, we only have to look at a level at a time. I would say, please always make sure you're using the latest version for both lives and samples. Occasionally, um, the assessment team will make amendments. I do try and um, let you know when this happens with an email alert, but sometimes um, the mechanics of the process defeat me and um, I don't, don't always get the chance to issue the alert in a timely way. So I would suggest that you only download and print off live assessments when you need them. Um, it's not good practice to keep stocks of the printed assessments. Where candidates prefer to use a laptop or a computer to generate their responses, um, this is perfectly permissible. And we have made the assessments available in editable PDF formats to facilitate that, where that works for candidates. Um, a reminder, candidates are only allowed to attempt each version of the assessment once. So they should never resit a paper that they have seen before. And we've always required centres to keep a record of which assessment titles each candidate takes. But what we're going to introduce with effect, immediate effect is some changes to that process. In addition to the titles of each assessment attempt candidates make, we're going to ask you to keep a record of the following information. The date the assessment was attempted or that they have resat an assessment and the actual marks they achieved. Um, now, you may already uh, be recording that sort of information in your uh, centre at tracking, but just in case we have provided an assessor assessment tracker template, which is available from the 4748 qualification page. Um, if, you're, if your centre's tracker already contains that information, that's fine, you carry on using it. Um, but we have, uh, we've made a template available for people who haven't actually been keeping the information in that format. Now, here's a big change. We are going to request that information from you, probably on a quarterly basis. Now, um, because of the GDPR um, situation, we're in the process of working out how this can, should be done um, securely. And what we will do is prior to the first point at which we're going to ask for that information, we will send an email alert um, with instructions about uh, when and how to do this. Um, and I would recommend, if you haven't already, that you sign up um, on our website for email updates and choose functional skills in the Preference Centre. Um, your EQA may ask to see a copy of this tracker. It, it, we, we are going to talk to them about this. It's not something that they, they're necessarily going to have to um, see, but actually it's good practice to share it with them so they can uh, get a feel for how the assessments are planning out for you and your learners. So finally, can you help us to help you? Um, we're always interested to hear from teachers and assessors about topics for new assessments. So we've got lots of titles there and we try and make those titles as appropriate for learners as we can. Um, but uh, it's always lovely to hear from centres about things that interest their learners. So if you have an idea, for a topic for an assessment, please drop us a line at preemployment at cityandguilds.com um, and then we will share that with the assessment team. The other thing that we were very keen to do this year is to provide some additional support materials. And one of these is around um, worked examples. So getting a sample paper that has been attempted by a candidate and actually getting our senior EQA to review it and provide a commentary. And we think that sort of thing um, might be quite useful to you. Um, we know that it's been great, uh, you know, it's received well at levels one and two. So we thought that it would be lovely to be able to do a similar thing at entry level. And so if you have completed sample papers that you would be willing to share, obviously we would redact um, candidate 
details and centre details so that that was not obvious, um, please get in touch to the pre-employment inbox. We're generally, we're looking for candidate responses that show um, a good pass and a borderline pass and maybe a fail for all three subjects and at all three levels. So obviously you might not be able to help us with all of those, but you might have um, something that um, that we could work on and start to provide some additional responses. And I suppose another question is, is there anything else that would be helpful um, for you? We know that um, Catherine will be doing some networks that have an entry level focus. Um, this probably won't be the last webinar we do with an entry level focus. Um, but is it I'm always interested to hear from people about ideas um, about what we could produce that would support you in your teaching. So it just remains really for me to say thank you for joining me today. I'm, I will put a recording of the presentation and the slides on the Maths and English Resource Hub, and please feel free to share those with your colleagues. Now, I've switched the question box on. I'm hoping that I was so thorough that um, I've answered any questions in advance. But just in case, um, if you'd like to, um, if you've got any questions, please type them in the question box, and I will do my very best to answer them. So I'm going to just pause there, take a breath, and give you a chance to actually type something. So, uh, Karen's come up with the first question. Well done, you get gold star for first question today, Karen. Uh, do you want the assessor candidate marks or the IQA candidate marks recording as some learners may have marks that change after sampling? Ooh, good question. Um, I think that, ooh, perhaps we need both then. OK, I'm going to go back to my template document and add in another column um, that says um, IQA marks, just because that would be quite informative about how far the marks have changed. I will be completely honest, we, we don't have a feel for whether candidates in the main are grouped around the pass mark or are candidates achieving way beyond the um, pass mark set for each paper. So really the raw marks were about giving us some information about how well candidates are performing on papers. Um, I think I'm going to say, uh, and I will, I'll start to add an FAQ about this, I think we would like to see both the original assessor marks plus um, the IQA marks if they change. And um, Jill has asked, can you tell us whether pass marks are generally increasing or decreasing? So, Jill, are you talking about the numbers of people who are passing assessments, so pass rates, um, or do you mean the actual mark that learners have to um, achieve in order to pass the paper? So, um, so, and then Tony's asked, without comparing the old and new papers, have pass marks increased? So the pass mark set for candidates to pass the reading and the writing papers is unchanged. But for, the, for maths, the pass marks at all three entry levels have increased. And that was because we had applied sawtooth effect to the papers that were available on launch. Um, and then what we would have done generally about sort of 18 months in was reviewed those papers and written some new papers and the pass marks would have been increased at that point. Um, but because we didn't release any new materials because COVID meant that many people weren't actually delivering assessments. So the, um, the uptake was quite small. We didn't really have enough information to make a judgment, but they have now been increased. Um, so hopefully I've answered Tony and Jill's comments there. Um, Back to us says, how can we get the passwords to 
access the assessments and marking schemes. So they are available on Walled Garden, which is City and Guild's administrative portal. So if you, um, if you don't actually have access to that, someone in your exams team will, um, and they will be able to provide you with the passwords for the mark schemes and the marking. And Tony said, can you repeat your answer for reading writing? Oh, sorry, I speak too quickly. So, Tony, the pass marks for reading and for writing are unchanged. It's quite um, interesting uh, since the reformed qualifications were introduced and certainly I know from um, talking to my colleagues in other awarding organisations, we haven't seen, we've seen very little difference in the standard and achievement for functional skills reading or functional skills writing. Actually, in some cases, the numbers of people passing those assessments has increased. Um, it has been maths that has been the big challenge, because I think if you if we're all honest, the change to the functional skills subject content for maths was was greater. And I think it has given um, learners more of a challenge and it's taken teachers a little while to get their heads around it now. Um, Anthony says, will new samples be representative of the actual papers? Some of the current samples per level are harder and easier than others. So, Anthony, the current samples have been reviewed um, to make sure that they are in line with the um, with the current live papers. And we think that in future we're going to move to a pattern where when we've retired live papers um they they lie um like actors they rest for a while and then we reintroduce them as samples so actually then you're using past papers as sample papers which should um should then be um it should be very clear that people are um actually sitting the same thing and Abdul Fadwo has asked, what's the link to the Maths and English Resource Hub? OK, I will put that link in this slide deck and get that slide deck up um, to the website um, as soon as possible, hopefully later today. And um, have there been any changes to the spelling test or speaking and listening? So the spelling test, um, there are new spelling lists have been released to go with the new um, papers, writing papers. Um, for speaking and listening, we're currently doing a review of the paperwork. So we do listen to you, honest, and we do hear from people um, and we feel that maybe we need to do a bit of additional guidance and tidy up some of the paperwork. So there haven't been any changes yet, but we think there will be. Uh, Actua asks, about the additional four samples. So I don't actually have a time frame for that just at the moment. My understanding is that there will be two available probably before Christmas and then two later in the new year. And uh, Joanne says, when you say tracking information should be submitted on a quarterly basis, do you mean each quarter of the whole academic year? Um, we're still discussing exactly when we're going to ask for this, Joanne. We're um, uh, sort of a, agreeing a point um, that would work for people to give us an idea of the flow of um, assessments that take place. So where are the bulk of the assessments taking place? And what we will do is we'll communicate in advance when we want that information and we'll explain what period we would like the tracking to cover. And Tony says, uh, we deliver in prisons. Are there any plans to address this re regarding content? For example, reading about a day in the park may be stressful. Other awarding bodies I have use different papers for prisons. Right, well, that's very interesting feedback. Tony, thank you. I will take that back to the assessment team. I think the intention is that we always have a choice of four papers and that the the paper you use, you should 
consider the topic in that paper um, to make it appropriate for um, the learners that you are working with. But I certainly will take back that feedback. I'm not sure, given um, how long it takes to develop new materials, whether we could actually go down the different papers for prisons, because that would then suggest a um, lack of parity in the qualification between people who happen to take the qualification in a secure environment and those who are in a training providers or um, an FE college. But as, as I say, I'll take that back and we'll have a discussion. And the spelling test is still 10 words. Um, Philip asks where the tracker template is on the website. So it's on the 4748 qualification page. There'll be a link in the um, in this slide deck to it. Um, it it's under centre documents. Um, so hopefully that's that's quite clear. But I'm going to have to get a lick on when we finish this webinar um, to put in an additional column and up, upload a new version. Now, I'm very mindful of time. We're approaching half past 11. Um, what I think I'll do is I'll leave the question box open for a little while. I'll go on mute um, just in case anybody has any more questions. But I'm going to um, take the opportunity to say thank you very much for joining me today. Um, please do send an email um, if, if you haven't have had time to pop your question in this uh, question box. If you do have any queries, please email the pre-employment inbox and the team will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. So just remain to say thank you. Have a good rest of the morning. Hopefully it won't rain too heavily on you. And I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Thank you.